So Jim and I are going to go see a movie and we're in different places. So I'm going to call him right now and I'll use Siri. Okay, Siri, call Jim McCluskey. Which phone number for Jim McCluskey? So Jim has two different numbers and it's asking me about home or work. And I say, not home. Whom shall I help you call? Doesn't work. Siri doesn't know how to understand that, but I have to get in there anyway and I call up. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello? Hey, Jim. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? No, I'm okay, okay. So, um, yeah, we're talking about a movie. What movie do you want to see tonight? Not Star Wars. Oh, not Star Wars, eh? <laughs> no. <laughs> I noticed what just happened. Uh, Pranav, in response to me, used three words, just not Star Wars. But what he actually managed to communicate was something much larger and more elaborate, more complicated. What he actually managed to say to me, what I took from his words, was, I do not want to see uh, Star Wars. So, um, the question we're trying to investigate is how that's possible. And we're trying to investigate that question with respect to both machines, that's the engineering aspect, and with respect to human beings, uh, that is the science aspect. That's right, because on the one hand, we want to make Siri work well, but on the other hand, as scientists, we want to understand how people can do this so effortlessly. So this thing, the problem is really, really hard for machines, and companies like Google are struggling to create machines that will uh, respond to a human speech in a natural way. But for us human beings, it's effortless, it's instinctive, requires no apparent effort at all. And as linguists, we're interested in how people do that. And one of the things we try to understand is, what can you do and can't you do with these kinds of shortenings? So, I can say not Star Wars here, and similarly, I could say something like, maybe I like Star Wars, maybe Star Wars, or probably Star Wars. But what I can't seem to say, and this little mark says, can't seem to say this, is don't Star Wars. Or, or it's also impossible for him to say should Star Wars. Ooh, that's even worse. Yeah. Should Star Wars. <laughs> we should see Star Wars. <laughs> Now notice, um, for these cases, we can probably figure out slowly what the other speaker intended to say, but it's still not part of our natural language abilities. So the scientific question is, why is this so easy for us? Why can we so effortlessly compute these complex meanings out of silence, basically, while programs like Siri have enormous difficulty with the same task? And from a linguistic standpoint, what's hard is to figure out what patterns are good and what patterns aren't, so we can theorize over them. And we can sit there in our armchairs and try to think up all of the possibilities, but things like these shortenings are very, very dependent on context. So we want to see them in lots and lots of scenarios to see which are good and which are bad. So what we do is we look in lots and lots of data. So these are supposed to be, you know, web pages or tweets or whatever. And then we try to look for patterns like this. So we have little algorithms that pull those patterns out. And then we get a list of those patterns, and we have an army of sophisticated <laughs> undergraduates who apparently have no necks. And what they do is they go and they read through them and they mark them up for all of the things that we care about. And then the result of their work becomes another list that you, next year, will be able to access and see as it grows as we go through the process of figuring out what kinds of shortenings are possible and what kind of kind of right. And because these stick figures here are very sophisticated people, because they're undergraduates trained in a really, really good undergraduate program, the annotations they provide for these examples about what's going on are incredibly sophisticated. And those sophisticated extra notations can feed into the business of theory construction, can feed into the business of machine learning, so that two things can happen. We as language scientists can better understand how this miracle is possible, but engineers at companies like Google uh, can also use our work uh, to improve the user experience when machines and people interact.